What's going on everyone? Today I'm going to talk about how I restructured my research workflow. So I finally, I'm not too recently, but I recently finished the um, 400 page PDF of the Viking Age leather work done in York for the time period of I think around 700 to 1100 AD. But I was reading this long document, taking notes, and um, I, I put it in Mendeley. I liked it for a hot minute, but Mendeley, it's even, it can't really export your notes in a plain text format, which as we know is the best because of all of the Unix options and just plain text is king. So I once again reconverted everything to another format. And instead of doing my notes in Markdown, I decided because I spent all that effort delving into LaTeX and really getting in the weeds with some of the stuff I wanted to do, that I just took my own custom LaTeX template and made some LaTeX notes. So what does my research workflow look like right now? So I have um, a research directory in my home folder. I have consolidated a few things. I had books up here and I had documents and I had, um, that can go away, um, but I had several other things in here. But in my research directory, I have uh, four main directories and then my bib, uh, my bibliography directory, and then just some notes or some, some documents for me. So my bib, fi bib file and directory, I went over all this in a prior video and it is a GitHub repo on my GitHub. So you can check this out if you like. It's just consolidating all my bibliographical references. I use get bib to you know, curl the results of um, a PDF DOI number and all that and then append it to one of these documents or one of these, you know, is it a paper, is it an article, is it a book? Consolidate it all into megabib. And then I reference the environmental variable um, that, ah, wrong environment. There. So I can, I always reference my environmental variable bib and it tells me where it is, research bib, mega bib. That's what I reference. So in my um, main research directory, what does my workflow look like? Well, just so I remember myself, um, my workflow looks like what I have here on my document. So I have a um, image directory. Because I like to have all my stuff externally referenced, I actually have an image directory for when I do um, images in LaTeX. So that way it's referencing a parent directory structure, image, and then inside of image, it'll have the name of the um, PDF document I'm researching. So this way everything is named the same. So I could have a document like 2003 underscore leatherwork, um, and that is the name of the PDF document that I am researching on or reading or whatever. Um, inside the same directory reading, where I'm currently reading something, um, currently I'm just, just my, my prior stats class book, but in there I would have the name of that file, the name of that file with the word notes appended to it, and it would be in a, a tech file, and then when I compile that tech file, it would also be a PDF. So each research subject item thing has three total files. The original PDF, the tech document where it has my notes, and then the compiled notes PDF document. Now, if I have images to put into my notes, I would have them in the image directory under the name that is the name of that article in the PDF. That way I could just search the name of that PDF in this entire directory and every item that has it would be would pop up. So inside this, I actually have the pictures to reference in my um, document, like um, something like that. Yeah. So that is like how the, the, the structure is working. I have unread for things I'm still going to go through. This is where books ended up. I have a bunch of stuff in here I can need, need to move around still, but uh, some of these need to be moved. But basically, this is what I have to read. Um, what I'm currently reading right now, and then what I finished. And so you can see like my finished product for my um, Viking research is the original document, which looks like this, if I could get it pulling up. So like this is the original document. You can see it's like almost 400 pages. Um, and then I have my notes tech document. A lot of law tech, I think it's like 2000 lines. But yeah, and then the compiled notes. And I have it formatted the way I have um, my formatting set on my article template, also on GitHub. And I have my images inserted in here. 
just the way I want them. So the way I work that is in my preamble, I have my graphics path for the graphic graphic X package and it just says parent directory image in the name of the PDF itself. And that is a directory. And inside there are all my images. So I just say, um, include graph. So I just say the name of the file in the braces. I don't have to specify a file path because the graphics file path is already set. So I just say the name of the file. So this is what a done project would look like in reading uh, my reading directory. You would see this for anything I'm currently researching. Um, inside image has the names of the files and then all of their sub items. If I have images to import into a Loctec document and that's that's basically it that's how i'm going through my stuff now it's uh, organized enough for me and also because i don't want to have directories upon directories upon directories and i don't want to have like some complex scripted system that i have to debug if something goes wrong i could easily just have everything organized just based on file name because i can easily see that this is 2020 when i read it what it is whether well, working in medieval york and then an author's last name mold so i could easily just see this structure and then it's .pdf, notes.pdf, notes.tech. So they're all organized by name. They're all gonna be clumped together anyways. And this is what I wanted. So um, back to my readme. So I have my uh, directory structure for images. I have my my bib files, all that I covered in a prior video. Done, and it will have those three documents, things I'm reading, things I'm currently, that are currently unread and then um, how I have my naming conventions on my files. The year I read the item, the name of the item, the author's last name, and then the extension would be whatever it is. And then notes. So that is currently how I have it set up. I kind of spent a little bit of time today thinking about how I wanted this to be structured because I kind of wanted a more consolidated, simplified, and structured way of doing this without getting too complex, but also having like really good looking notes. And I just decided to just use my LaTeX template and then have the output look you know, have it look nice. It looks pretty. Um, I have an abstract in there, but that's really just for like saying like what my goal for this research item was, my title in it, um, table of contents, because I just love how LaTeX prints tables of contents. By the way, I structured this one because I didn't take too many notes because I was really looking for pertinent things for me to connect back to my um, Renaissance Fair thing, my act where I actually do talk about leatherwork in the Viking Age, I wanted it to be about um, things that are actually pertinent to what I wanted to talk about. I don't care about certain elements of um, the state of the finds or how they um, cleaned up the leather or how they had to preserve it. I, I, I don't care. I wanted to know like, what did they have in the Viking Age? Like what were they, what were the decorations like? What were the tooling methods? What was the materials? What type of skins did they use? Um, what was common? How did they dye it? How did they tan it? How did they, yeah. So all that stuff I wanted to include in there and I didn't want to include a lot of the fluff. It was a 400 page PDF. So what I did is I just wrote down um, sections, subsections and sub subsections, et cetera, for the structure of the document in the exact um, order of the existing table of contents. So the entire table of contents of the original document is represented here. But as I go through the, the um, headings, you can see like two to three, these sections, I don't have anything under here. That's because I don't have the original document. I don't have it highlighted. I didn't do anything graphical. I wanted somebody to be able to like take these notes and take the document and be able to go, okay, I see where the he general introduction heading is. Underneath there, you'll see my notes. So they could easily see like where these notes would fall on in the section of the original document. And for me, that's also like, you know, it's for me as well. But, or they could just easily read this and see the cliff notes of like what I pulled out uh, that is pertinent to say, putting on a leatherworking in the Viking age act at um, a Renaissance fair. So this is like how I structured this type of document. Now, this might not be how I do things for everything, um, but at least for this, this is what I've, I found really, to, really worked for me. Now for things like um, a journal or a research paper, I might just look at that and write some general small notes and I mean, it's not long enough. It's not a long form document to have like a whole table of contents like this 400 page monstrosity. So it might not look like this, but um, I also wanted to do this because then I could easily, if I needed to ever use this in a consolidated reference, like if I wrote a paper on Viking Age leatherwork for whatever reason, if I ever do that, 
um, if I need to pull in these uh, like citations or um, paraphrase or snippets of uh, text from this document, I want to be able to go back, find out exactly where it is so I can reference page numbers if I ever need to. But it just sets me up for success later on. Um, so that's how I structured that. Now, if it's not a long form thing like a journal or a paper, I might just take simple, simple notes. And I have um, a notes.tech template file here. I just copy and make a new one. A lot of stuff in the preamble just to make it look pretty. Here's where I would put my notes, really. I mean, that's it. Um, and I'm just using the abstracts, uh, abstract portion to just you know, write what, what my goal or purpose is in studying this material that I'm currently looking at. Um, now in here, I also have my stats class textbook. This is from like my stats class I took in college. Um, well, not in college. I took this as an I don't online place, but you know, college credit worked worth. Um, because I have my VimWiki set up for this, and it's just it's not like a research paper. It's kind of just a class textbook. I might read this and just make VimWiki notes, um, and that would work for me, especially with what my current projects are. And so that's probably what I'm going to do with that. But it's still here in my research stuff because I am researching it. So anything I have to research, I am putting here. And it will generally follow this workflow of make a new note document, keep all the naming conventions the same, move it between unread, reading, and done, so I can keep track of what I'm actually reading and taking care of at the time. And I moved my environmental variable for my uh, bib reference from documents to here, because this way it just consolidates everything, everything research-related into one directory. And I am quite happy with how it is right now. Who knows, I might get more advanced with this later on. I know that um, Nick's casts, I talked about him in my last video, His he's got a crazy note citation system in Vim and Bash that is just impressive how he got that set up. Um, at this point, I'm, I might look at something that complex or maybe look at what he's got in the future, but I just wanted something simple enough that got out of my way and let me just spend less time tooling my system and actually doing the research I'm trying to do. So that's what I'm working with so far. Let me know what you guys use. If you have any suggestions, um, yeah, let me know. Thanks.